What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today it's an awesome day I, and I can't tell you how excited I am. We are going to start the process of lowering the green truck. Now, if you guys have been around for very long, you know that everything I own is lowered. The cars, the trucks, you name it, we lower it. I don't care if it's four wheel drive, two wheel drive, it gets lowered here and that is what we are doing. Now, why is it taking so long? A couple months back, and I say a couple months back, probably eight months ago, I bought a red 2018 four wheel drive Sierra. I was going to lower that truck. Now, the kit I used on my white 17 crew cab Sierra, that company, and I'm not gonna name any names, reached out to me and said, hey, we would love to sponsor you. We will cover a whole kit, airbags, everything for your 2018. You know how I am, I sell cars, sold the car or sold the truck, reached out to them and said, hey, look, I sold the truck, but I bought this green one. If you guys want to sponsor it, I understand. But if not, no big deal. He's like, no, 100%, we're going to sponsor that. And I told him I might be buying a 2020 down the road. And stay tuned, because that may happen. But um, what what when it, what happened of that? So that was in February. They reached out to me and said, hey, 100%, we'll sponsor you. February, now we are almost into August. This is the end of July, and um, no kit. And I've reached out to them several times and like, oh, we're waiting on this, we're waiting on that. You know what? I'm tired of waiting. Um, obviously, they didn't care. I see them keep posting stuff on Instagram where they have given out those, or they have sold those kits. So obviously, I was not a big priority, which is fine. It's not a big deal. But just don't reach out to somebody if you're not going to sponsor them. So now that that rant's over, let's talk about what we are going to use. Now, on my last couple trucks, I have used an A-arm drop, and I'm completely satisfied with those. Uh, except a few things. For one, the last kit, the kit that I was having uh, supposedly sponsored was painted instead of powder coated, which sucks. The bushings in the front are um, poly bushings, which suck. And uh, so I didn't like either one of those things. So I'm going back to an old school spindle spring drop. Now you guys are probably wondering where your spring's at. Well, they haven't came yet. They should be here tomorrow. But that doesn't matter because this will be a couple day project anyway. So what do we have? We have McGoy's spindles, two inch drop spindles. We have McGoy's flip kit. We have McGoy's hangers and they have rubber bushings, not poly bushings. Rubber bushings are what the factory uses. They're nice and quiet and they're not garbage. We have obviously C notches because we are going low. And then I am using a uh, shock relocations, but I'm using Beltex springs or it's not springs, but struts and shocks. And the reason I'm using those guys is I have used those in the past and they are great shocks. I actually think they're a little better than McGoy's. McGoy's are kind of soft. These are a little more firm. And um, so that's why I'm using them. Now, the big controversy with this drop, it's just for a 16 inch wheel. And the reason I did that is because I've used this in the past and it has the least amount of bump steer out of all the kits that I've used. Now, nothing against the 17 inch wheel version, but it just seems like it has a little bit more of bump steer. Now you do lose a little bit of turning radius, which you can clearance a little bit and get that back. That is not a huge deal. And we will talk about that when we get to that section. But this is the kit guys. Um, I reached out to Tim. I think it's Tim's online suspension or Tim's suspension online. That's what it is. He is great. Talk to him on the phone. Super great guy. I would recommend him to anybody. I will list all these parts, uh, links to these parts down below and everything that I will be using as always, but we need to get started. So we are going to start in the back and work our way towards the front. Now, like I said, this will probably be a couple day project. I'm starting pretty late in the day, but you guys won't notice that because it'll be on film. But the very first thing we're going to do is we've already got some bricks or wheel chocks up front to make sure this thing doesn't roll off when we start to jack it up. But I'm going to lift it up off the ground. I'm going to get the wheels off. I'm going to put some um, jack stands in front of the leaf spring. And the reason I want that is I need this completely relaxed so I have more room to cut for our C-notch. Now, um, this is a bolt-in C-notch. A lot of people weld them in. I may have a friend of mine, I don't have a welder, I may have a friend of mine run across it with a welder. I'm not sure I am going to bolt them in for sure. Uh, this will be a something you guys can do at your house with a jack and jack stands. I want to make sure that it's very simple. You don't have to have any lifts or crazy equipment. That lift doesn't really work well for suspension anyway. But uh, let's get started. Like I said, we're going to we're gonna lift it up, take the wheels off. And then the next thing I'm going to do just to get stuff out of the way is I'm going to take the rear hitch off. So uh, I will show you guys obviously this whole process, but let's go get started. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and take the hitch off first and there's only three bolts. Now this is not a factory hitch. So um, normally it's 21 millimeter all the way up. 
It is actually 21 in the back here, and these are actually 22. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock this out real quick, get it out of the way, and then we'll lift it up and get the wheels and tires off. Now that we have all that out of the way comes the fun stuff. Now you've noticed that I've let the rear end come down as far as possible and that's just to give me more access here. Uh, you don't have to do that but believe me it's going to save you some time. So there are two different sides to these. The frame kicks out uh, on the front side. You can see that it's coming this way. So that piece is going to go up against this right here. And basically what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to center this over the axle. So we're going to kind of lift it into place and then we're gonna make a mark and I'm just gonna score it using like a screwdriver. And what that'll do is it'll allow me uh, access to the, or showing me the spot where I need to cut. The other thing we need to do is I'm gonna grab a block and we're just going to lift, not lift, but we're gonna support the frame just in case it wanted to move when you started to cut. Now I've never had this be an issue before, but just in case uh, that is what we are going to do. Now we do have it supported on the suspension or on the frame up front there. You guys can see the jack stand and uh, so we're just going to put a block up here we're not going to lift we're just going to put some support on it so let's get this marked and uh, we'll start cutting now for cutting this i'm just using a cutoff wheel on my grinder now guys obviously i've got a mask for protection make sure you're using something over your eyes because believe me it sucks to get this in your eyes so you can also see that I've traced it out. That is the area we're gonna cut. Now, on this side, there's nothing to concern yourself with as far as anything being on the back side. Now, on the other side, once we go to it, I will show you kind of what you need to do to get stuff out of the way. But this side, uh, there is nothing there. You could cut this off, but it's gonna come off with this piece. So there's no, there's no purpose in doing that. And then the back, you can see I have just up against the frame. So we should be good. I do have my uh, C-notch right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim that out and then we'll test fit it, make sure that we trimmed enough out and uh, then start drilling holes and bolting it in place. Now it looks as though we've cleared the spot that we need to um, get out of the way. So I'm just gonna tap this with my sledgehammer, get it to bend and then we'll wiggle it in and out until it comes out. If you guys can see back there, there's another reinforcement piece. Now I think I've cleared a majority of it, but we're gonna have to cut a little bit more in order to get this completely out. Now that we have that piece out, we can start to see if this fits and it doesn't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind in the areas where it doesn't fit until we get it up in there where it needs to be. So obviously we need to work on the bottom sections here because it's not going in, but that's normal. Don't, don't worry about that. It's, um, it's pretty common to have to trim and fit until it gets right where it needs to be. So now that all the trimming is done, we just need to drill our holes. Now there's um, obviously four on each side and then there's two on the bottom. So what I like to do, actually, yeah, two on the bottom, each side of the bottom. So a uh, total of 12. And uh, what I like to do is mark this with this clamped up where it needs to go. And then once we do that, 
we're going to go ahead and put a couple of these bolts in and then we will work on the bottom side uh, so it draws in close and then we will drill the holes for the bottom so I may not put all of them in maybe these two and the outer two just to make sure like I said that it pulls up against the frame before we drill those bottom two holes so I've got everything marked we are just drilling half inch holes uh, like I said I'm drilling these four or eight total up top and then once we get a couple of those pulled that plate pulled in then we'll drill the two bottom ones So once all your holes are drilled, all you need to do is put the bolts, the nuts, and the washers on. And uh, like I said, we're going to pull that close. Once we do that, then we'll mark these two bottom holes. Uh, I'm just going to pull a couple of these in so I can mark those holes. So like I said, I'm not going to put them all in, just maybe a couple more. I might put four in, these bottom four, but I'm going to draw it in close before I mark those bottom holes. So I've actually only pulled this one and this one tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and mark these holes. There's four of them on the bottom. So it is the next morning. Uh, I ran out of daylight, but I did get this bolted into place. Now once you get the bolts in, all you have to do is torque them down to 65 foot-pounds. I didn't feel like I needed to show you guys that. Sorry my neighbor's bull over here is making a ton of noise. but. Anyway, we are bolting it. It's bolted into place. 65 foot pound is what you torque them all to. Now it is kind of hard over here because you have to reach behind. Uh, the frame is basically boxed on the back side, so you kind of have to reach in behind to put your washer and your nut on. But onto the other side, and I'm not going to show you guys the process because you basically know how to cut it out at this point. But on this side, there are a couple brackets in the way. So there's two 13 millimeters up top. There's a push-in connection here, and then I'm going to take the uh, emergency brake uh, holder loose. But I'll show you here on the inside, you need to get this stuff out of the way so your brake lines, uh, once you undo that bracket up top, you'll be able to pull those over. And I'm going to use just a bungee cord to hold those out of the way while I cut this section out. Other than that, just be mindful that the gas tank is right here. Now we're going to be cutting um, you know, over to this side of it, so we're not going to, it shouldn't be an issue. But just be mindful of that, uh, you know, keep good hand on your uh, cutting or your uh, grinder wheel as you're cutting through that. Just make sure that you don't go into the tank. The tank is plastic. The other thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and spray some penetrating oil on all my leaf spring connections, so the front and back, just to get those loose while I'm cutting this out. Uh, so the next section here, I'll show you this will be in place and uh, we'll start with the disassembly of the actual leaf spring and the rear end. We now have this side into place and you guys will probably notice that one of my bolts is different. That is because I lost one or it didn't come with one or whatever. I'm pretty sure that I just it rolled off somewhere uh, but I just had to improvise. Now uh, I had a grade 8 bolt just laying around so uh, this side is a little bit harder it's a little hard to get to these I actually used the magnet to hold the bolt and washer into place while I got them started I can get a wrench in there but um, just to hold them steady I had to use a magnet but we've got it in and now our next step basically is we need to relocate the axle on top of the leaf spring so the very first thing I'm going to do is we're going to take the shocks out 21 millimeter on the top and the bottom and uh, obviously you have two shocks. Let's go ahead and get those out of the way. Once those are out of the way, then we will probably go to working on um, our hangers in the front and the rear. Next things we're gonna be taking loose are the hangers and they are 21 millimeter. Now I'm going to take the bottom off here and I'll take the top off once it's out of the vehicle. So not a really big deal. You don't have to get both of them off right now. All you have to do is get that bottom one off so we can get the spring out of the way. And the same thing in the front. Now on this side is the only side you're gonna be able to take the leaf pack completely out. But for now, we're just gonna take that bolt out and the front bolt out. Now that we got that other side um, disassembled, well, we didn't take the bolts out. I'm leaving the bolts in, uh, but I did get the nut off. 
now we're going to get um, this rear nut off of this side, the 21 millimeter. And then on the front here, we're just going to loosen this one. And uh, we'll sh I'll show you that here in just a second. But let's go ahead and get this 21 millimeter off back in the back. Now on this one, unfortunately, I can't get my impact in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a 12 millimeter and I'm going to actually set it to tighten on this outer piece here that's 12 millimeter and that while I hold the center section. You'll have to do this by hand. Now, all we have to do is get this side loose. It will not come out unless you take your gas tank out. So if you want to do that, you can. That's just extra steps that honestly I don't want to do and it's not really necessary. But we do have to get this one loose. Don't have to take it all the way out. Uh, but it will be a little tough by hand. Once we have that front one loose and the back one kind of pulled out, it's not, it's still setting in there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the 21 millimeters that hold the leaf spring into place. So basically your U-bolts, you're going to take these completely off. Now the rear end is going to want to fall. I do have it supported in the center, but it's going to kind of wall. It's going to wobble back and forth. But um, that is our next step, though. So take all four of these 21 millimeters out on this side and on the other side, and then we'll talk about relocating the leaf pack. So once you have both of those out, your rear end is kind of loose, you can go ahead and on the passenger side, remove the front bolt out of the leaf spring hanger and the rear bolt out of the leaf spring hanger. And then we can pull this completely out of the way. Now we are not gonna be reusing this plate, so you can discard that, get it out of the way. Uh, one thing we do have to do is we do have to reverse this pin. So I recommend spraying this down because a lot of time this is really seated in place. We do have to flip that around and uh, point it the other way. But uh, let's go ahead, I'll get those both out and then we can pull this leaf spring completely out of the truck on the passenger side. So now over on the driver's side, we're gonna remove that rear uh, hanger bolt. And obviously we can't remove the front, but once we get the rear out, uh, we're gonna go ahead and reverse this pin here in the center. And uh, we'll talk about how we're gonna move this out of the way to gain access to move the rear end. Once we have that leaf spring bolt out, we'll take this plate out like we did on the other side. And you can see I've got it clamped on this side. And I'm gonna clamp it on this side just to keep the leaf pack kind of together while we take this out and reverse it. Now, on the bottom side, I also have, that is a rounded off um, bolt. So that's the only way is really just get a pair of vice grips and get a clamp on it. And I'm gonna use my impact. This is a 15 millimeter. We're gonna see if it'll come off. A lot of times you don't have issues getting it off it's getting out of the spring pack. So we will see if I have to, we may have to heat this up, but we will see if it comes out once I get it, uh, get the nut off the top there. So what I like to do so I don't mess up the threads is thread this back on and just tap it. And this, we got lucky guys. This is normally way harder to get out than that. All we have to do is reverse it, put this on the other side and tighten it back up. And this side is good. Now the other side, obviously the spring packs out of the car, so it makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to move the rear end around here to get uh, the 15 on the bottom uh, with the impact. Anyway, you can use a ratchet to, to tighten this up. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. Now comes probably the hardest part, uh, and I, it's not really that it's hard, it's just cumbersome, and uh, it's just a pain. If we could take the leaf pack out, that would be awesome if you had the gas tank down because then you could just move it on the bottom. But uh, what I choose to do, and you guys notice when I put this in, I didn't bolt these back up, so I have all this loose. We are going to push the rear end that way as far as we can, and then we are going to take this off. It's, it's loose. I can't lift it with one hand, but we're going to take this off and move it to the bottom side of the rear end here. Now, obviously we have to get the rear end over far enough in order to make that happen, but uh, that is our next step. Now, the only real thing I'll show you, I'll take you out the tripod here. The only real thing I'm putting pressure on is the vent to the rear end. Now you can see it's pretty tight, but as far as the brake lines, we are good there. Now I think this is probably enough room. 
once I move this over, we'll see, like I said, I can't do it with one hand, but uh, I think we've got it over far enough where that will be enough room for us to get the leaf pack down, lift the rear end up and uh, get it seated on top there. So once we have the leaf pack under there, um, now is a great time to go ahead and put your shackle on. Believe me, it's really a pain to put it in up in the truck. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab my shackle and put it into place. And then we'll go over and do basically the same thing. So we'll repeat the reversal of the pin. And like I said, that leaf pack's easy because we can just roll it under the rear end once the rear end's lifted up. But let me go grab a 21 millimeter. We'll take this off real quick, get the new one in place. So if you notice, you have a couple different holes on this one. Now, we the, the flip kit itself on these trucks is a six inch. If you go to the bottom hole, that's a seven. If you go to the top hole, it's an eight. So we're gonna go with the seven for now. I'm hoping because this is a V6 truck, my springs settle out in the front. We may end up having to put the stock one back in for now, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the bottom hole. Like I said, that is the seven inch setting. So at this point, we are ready to put this leaf spring back into place. Now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the back in first just because of the exhaust. I don't think I'll be able to clear it if I don't. So I'm gonna put the back up over the exhaust. Then we're gonna hook up the front. And all we're gonna do is put the bolt in and thread the nut on. We're not gonna tighten anything up yet. So front or rear, we're gonna put both of them in, but do not tighten them up. What we, the reason we wanna do that is because we want to load the suspension before we do any of that stuff. So let's get this into place and uh, get both bolts threaded on then we'll talk about how we're going to put the saddle into place which is actually what holds the rear end now that we have that bolt in place we need to lift the rear end up and get the back one in place on the other side uh, and how I'm going to do that, I actually have two jacks to make sure that it stays balanced, but uh, we're going to lift it up, obviously enough to get this back into its pocket. Now that I have the rear end lifted, I went and grabbed the actual flip kit itself. Now, uh, if you notice, there's an offset hole. That hole needs to go towards the front of the truck. So that's going to go around that piece that we um, reversed in the leaf pack, it's gonna set on that. And then this, these two pieces here are gonna set in this channel. So what we're wanting to do is, I've got the rear end where I can kind of teeter it back and forth. I'm gonna lift this up, put it underneath. We're gonna guide it into the pocket. So these two pieces on either side. And the hole needs to do, like I said, face the front. That is very important. Don't make it face the rear. We want to push the rear end back since we are basically lengthening the drive shaft the lower this thing gets. I wanted to show you, see what I'm talking about. It sets up in this pocket on both sides and we have the bolt in the hole and the hole is facing forward. So now we just need to do the exact same thing on the other side. So I have the actual flip kit in on both sides or the saddle in on both sides. Now we have this piece. This actually sets right on top and you can see it goes it's centered in this hole and then you drop your factory leaf springs right back on top and then we will put this plate on the bottom and use your factory nuts to tighten everything up. So once we have those just snug down on both sides, we'll tighten those up once we get the suspension loaded. So now I'm gonna move on to the shock extensions. Now, if you're not running these, you can skip this part, but we do have to drill a hole. The way these mount is they use, uh, it comes with bolts to mount them here. You're gonna have to kind of hammer them on a little bit, tap them on because the powder coat makes them a little too thick. But you could see here on the back, we're gonna have to drill a hole 
in order for them to set into place. Now it does come with all the hardware, but you reuse your stock shock bolt to put the shock on, but it comes with the bolt to hold it to the old location as well as this new um, section there. Now this does go on the outside, but let's get that hole drilled and then hopefully we'll be able to get these shocks into place. Now, once we get this bolted into place and all tightened up, we're it's time to put the shock in. So I've got Beltec, like I said, street performance shocks. We're just gonna put them into place. I'm gonna loosely uh, tighten this and then we'll talk about torque specs later. So once you have your shock in place, the last thing we want to do before we start reassembling, um, you know, like your wiring here that we took down uh, or this tie down and those two 13s and the press in one up above is we need to put our bump stop in. Uh, the reason is you, if you put those in place, it makes it kind of hard to get a wrench back there. Generally you don't have to have a wrench. You can just turn this because it's rubber. Uh, it's really hard rubber, but uh, that just goes in. It is a nine sixteenths on the top. If you do want to use a wrench on it, like I said, generally you don't have to, there's just a hole here in the new C notch that we put in. So we're going to get that put into place. And then we will go ahead and put our 13 millimeters back in, tightening everything up. And uh, we'll get the wheels on and we'll get it down on the ground. Now, uh, I'm gonna put some blocks under it because obviously it's gonna be pretty low, it'll be hard to get under. But what we're going to do at that point is we'll go through and torque everything uh, with the suspension loaded instead of trying to tighten it now and then um, have some squeaks or things bind up. Once you get all that stuff put into place, all those 13 millimeter uh, basically tie downs, we are ready to put the wheel back on. We're going to lift it up and then I've got some blocks I'm going to set it on so we can go through and torque all the suspension with pressure on it. So it's not, for one, like I said, you're, it's going to be so low that you're not going to be able to get under this thing uh, to get any kind of torque on, on basically anything. So uh, that's why we're going to put it on blocks. But you'll see that here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and put the wheel on and um, then we'll get it lifted up and put on those blocks. So holy cow, this thing is low. Uh, this is exactly what I want. It's a little almost tucking tire in the back. Uh, got plenty of room for my tire not to rub. If we have to, we'll clearance that fender, but uh, I think we're gonna be good. This one, same way. Yeah, man, this truck needs painted. Anyway, let's get under this thing and uh, start to torque some stuff down. Now, I do like to get up in the bed and kind of bounce the suspension down, uh, up and down a few times to make sure everything's fully seated. And uh, then we'll go ahead and torque everything down. So I haven't worked on one of these trucks in a long time, so I haven't talked about, uh, or haven't even looked at torque specs, but it's really crazy because all the newer stuff has random torque specs throughout the entire truck. But this truck, literally the top and the bottom both of the strut or the uh, shock is 70 foot pounds. The connection here from the body to the actual um, hanger is 70 foot pounds. The top connection to the leaf pack is 70 foot pounds. And the front, so the very front of this leaf spring up there that we undid, now that one is 110, and your U-bolts are 53. So relatively simple, especially since the majority of it's 70, the only difference are the 110 up front and the 53 here. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with all that now that you know the torque specs. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, torque it all down. We will get it off of the blocks and uh, we'll turn it around and well i guess we'll get started on the front well guys it has definitely got the cali lean at this point so um back is down got it turned around and we are going to start on the front the first thing i did was obviously chalk up the wheels now we're going to lift the front up get the wheels off and uh, start tearing into the front now that we got the wheel off the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to unhook the abs line so it's plugged in up top here 
and you'll have to wiggle it back and forth. Sometimes you got to pry it to get it out. And then we're going to disconnect all these lines that are going to be in our way. I just use a screwdriver to pull those apart and then I pull it out of the channel. And then we have a 10 millimeter here on top, which the kit, the new spindles comes with a new one of these, so you can, you should probably use it. Chances are this is threaded different, but you can set this to the side. And then I am going to release the uh, brake cable from there as well, just to give me a little more room to work. tight. Once we get that out, I'll move it over and I just put this back into place so we know that that's the one that goes there. Now, once we have the ABS line out of the way, and you see it's all loose here, we're going to go ahead and um, I'm going to I'm going to pop this out of this channel real quick, if possible. May have to go grab a pair of pliers. Yeah, I'm going to have to. There we go. Alright, so once we get that out of the way, now we're going to go grab, uh, I think it's a 19 millimeter, we'll check, but we're going to get the brake assembly out of the way and we're going to move it up here and we're just going to suspend it with um, like a bungee cord so you're not putting a ton of pressure on your brake lines. You definitely don't want pressure on those. So I'm going to go grab the socket, we'll get this, uh, I'm going to take the whole bracket and everything off, I'm not going to take the caliper separate from the um, actual bracket, I'm going to take it all in one piece, move it over to the side. So it's actually, uh, let's see, what is it? Oh, it's an 18 millimeter um, to get these off. Now, I don't think this thing has ever had brakes before. So to make it a little easier on you guys, I, uh, I busted this off with a brake over bar. So chances are you may have to do that, but remove these two 18s. And uh, I think we have enough brake line where it actually will just sit on the ground. Now, normally, the brake line's pretty short and you'd have to suspend it somewhere, but this one looks to be long enough where I can just set it down on the ground. So next we need to take, there are three 15 millimeters, so here, here, and here. We need to take those out and that'll get the hub completely out of the way. Now sometimes your hub is going to be stuck. Um, I just like to take, I took my mallet here and tapped on the actual spindle to loosen it up a little bit. And Oh, there we go. Came out a little quicker than I thought. The next two things I'm gonna take off are the sway bar end link here and uh, the two bottom shock bolts, which this on the, I'm using something to hold it steady on the top side. The bottom of this is 14. The bottom of your actual shock bolts are 13s. So the very next thing we're going to take out is the top part of the actual shock itself. Uh, it is a 15 millimeter on the top. Now it's going to start to spin, so I just put some. Uh, I'll just put some vice grips on the top on the stud uh, to keep it from spinning. It, it'll it start to come loose, it generally does, and then it starts to spin. So just make sure you have some vice grips to put on the top side of it, and then we'll get that spring, or sorry, that um, shock out of the way. Now the next couple things I'm going to loosen are, this is an 18 millimeter for the tie rod end. 
it may start to spin. If it does, you may have to put something on the end of it. May get lucky here. It's not going to spin. I'm going to put this back on. And then there's an 18 on your upper upper ball joint. This wouldn't come out because the ball joint's in the way. I can show you guys this 18 right here needs to come out or we're not going to take it completely off we are just loosening it and then the bottom one is a 24 but I do not have a deep 24 so we're gonna to have to use a uh, 15 16 As I said, I'm not taking this completely off. We're just going loose. And then I'll take this bottom ball joint off, which like I said, we're using the 15 16 just because I don't have a 24 deep. For the next step, there's a couple different methods of thought. Uh, a lot of people use a pickle fork. I freaking hate those things because they absolutely ruin the boots on all your ball joints and uh, everything else. So uh, I'm going to hit it with a four pound sledge just here on the A-arm, here on the end, so we can get this loose. And uh, what we're trying to do is knock both the ball joints loose. Now, it'll probably take a couple hits. So um, just take your time, not a big deal. Try to hit on these areas where the metal is the thickest, same way on the bottom. So you might see me turn it around back and forth, uh, but shouldn't take real long. So once you get those ball joints knocked loose, it took a little bit on the bottom one. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and lift up on the bottom A-arm. Now I'm using a block and an extra jack and we're going to put as much pressure as we can until the truck starts to lift just like that we're going to go ahead and take these off so the top one really doesn't have any pressure i could have taken it off before but the bottom one the bottom one's under some pressure I think it's spinning. There we go. Now the reason we're doing this guys is I don't want to use a spring compressor. For one, they're a freaking pain to get in here on these cars. And uh, so at this point what we're going to do is we're going to stand a little bit back and we're going to let the suspension down. Once I got it down as far as I can go here, I'm going to lift, I've got another jack in front of the truck that I'm gonna lift it up so I can get my block out of the way. And um, once the block is out of the way, then we'll be able to pry the spring out of the pocket. We're just going to use a pry bar and see if we can pry the spring out. I have to go get my other pry bar. There we go. So now the spring is out, and we have some work to do because on these spindles that I'm using, holy cow, um, these rivets have to come out because we have to relocate the ball joint to the top. So. I'm going to get my grinder. There's a couple different ways. You could cut an X in it and use an air chisel. I don't have an air chisel. I got a buddy that has one, so if the grinding doesn't work, we may end up having to go get his air chisel, but um, I'm going to try to just grind the heads off, and if I wreck the ball joint, then I'll just get a new one, but um, that's our next step. We have to get these out, like I said, so we can relocate them to the top for the new spindles. 
So it's the next day. I'm on uh, day three. Now, technically, I haven't worked three days, but uh, our next thing that we need to accomplish is we have to get this ball joint out. Now, GM decided it was an awesome idea to rivet these into place, and it makes them extremely hard to get out. So basically, the first thing we're going to do, we're gonna we're not gonna be reusing the ball joint. I'm gonna put new ball joints in. Um, they're kind of you can see they're worn out anyway, but. What we need to do is we're going to cut an X into the top of each one of these. Now I'm going to use my grinder for these and then part of these and then I'm going to use my Dremel because my grinder wheel I don't want to cut into this. And um, essentially why we're doing that is we're going to use an air hammer to knock the heads of those off. It's still going to be a long tedious process. I've got my block here to give me some resistance when I'm using the air hammer. Once I knock the heads off and you're going to see that um, you're going to be hammering straight down trying to push those rivets out and they are very very stubborn uh, a lot of times it takes you know an hour or two to get all four of them out it's it, it literally can take that long so I've also got my torch here uh, if you guys have a uh, torch that would be helpful because you can heat this up now if you're reusing this good luck because a lot of times you're going to damage it in the process but that is our next step we're going to cut those X's in get the heads knocked off and uh, we'll see where we go from there So now that we have the X's cut into place, we're going to take our air hammer and uh, a somewhat sharp bit, and we're going to just chisel the heads of those off. And that's hopefully the plan. Now, I may have to cut these back ones a little more, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and try to get them off without having to cut the rest of them through. Now comes the fun part of switching bits and trying to drive um, those old rivets out. And believe me guys, you're going to spend some time here. So now that I've got that ground flat, um, I went ahead and used a center punch and punched a spot in the center of each of these so you're pressing nice and even. I did put a block under it that just keeps the arm from moving that way you're getting a good solid foundation to drive. And uh, well here we go, it's probably going to take me an hour. So while the compressor is uh, filling up, I've only got a 30 gallon compressor, I really need a 60. but. Um, I'm drilling with uh, just a small, a little bit smaller drill bit than what these actually are. And so I'm drilling, once the compressor fills up, then I'm using the air hammer. Once it starts kicked on again, then I switch back to the drill and um, just gradually we're going to work them out. So let's talk about this process and how much it actually sucks. Uh, I just got the first one out, about 30 minutes of work to get one out. Um, kind of what I'm doing is, like I said, I'm pushing with the air hammer and then I'm drilling and then I'm pushing with the air hammer and then I'm drilling. And uh, eventually when I get, it seems as though if I get about halfway through with the drill bit and pushing, uh, it pushes right out. So. We just have, what, three more on this side and four more on the other side. It's gonna take a while, guys. But I was also noticing that my upper ball joints are trashed, so we're probably gonna to have to replace those two. Not really something I wanted to do. I just wanted to put this thing back together. But ultimately, whether you go with the 17-inch spindle that doesn't require this or the 16-inch spindle that rides better and does require this, you're gonna to have to replace your ball joints at some point. So chances are, if you're lowering it, it's got, nine, let's say 75,000 miles or more, probably needs ball joints anyway. So this is gonna make this process super simple down the road if I ever have to change ball joints again, or if somebody else buys a truck and they have to change ball joints, all they have to do is unbolt it, bolt a new one in, and you're good to go. Uh, as far as the top one, I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do yet. I may end up ordering some upper A-arms from DJM, just because when I'm looking at my bushings, they're kind of worn out as well and they do come with a new ball joint now not the ball joint of my preference but 
We'll talk about that when we get to that. That's that's a little ways down, but let's go ahead and see if we can drive the rest of these out. And I won't show you a time lapse because it takes so long and uh, it's a pain. Believe me, it's a pain. But we're gonna keep working on it and then we'll go to the next step. So here we are a couple hours later and literally it took me a couple hours. Uh, we need to pull that old ball joint out and um, once we do that, we'll be able to make room for the spacer. Now the spacer, what it's going to do, it's going to take the place of the ball joint because the ball joint's going to go on top. Now, like I said, I'm going to be replacing this, but we do have some trimming to do. And uh, once I get this ball joint out, which I'm just going to have to hit it with a hammer because there's a couple spots still holding it, but we'll put that in and I'll show you where I'm going to mark and kind of what needs to line up, how much you need to trim. So with the ball joint out, I like to use this as a template. So. What I'm going to do is drop a couple of the bolts in here. And now this does go on the inside, but what I'm showing you is how much you need to trim off this top piece. So the main concern is not so much these areas, but it is here in the center. So I'm just gonna mark it. I said I'm gonna mark it. Maybe it's my marker's not marking. So once you get it marked, you could take it out of place and then we're just gonna use a grinder uh, with a flap wheel in order to grind that down. And what I'm gonna do is I'll put this in. You wanna make sure that you have clearance for this section here. This is going to face up. Uh, you need to clearance a, that little half moon in this as well. So how we're going to tell if we went far enough is we're going to put this into place and it may be a little tough the first time, you may have to nudge it in. So as you can see, we need to come out. Uh, this is perfectly fine. Of course, our holes aren't, we're not quite lined up here. Let's get it. So we need to come a little further here on the center section, not much. And then we need to come uh, probably a quarter of an inch on both sides. Uh, and then we'll be finished with that and we'll be ready to put the new ball joint in. Now, I'm waiting on the new ball joint. Of course, like I said in the video, you guys won't notice that, but it'll be another day when we come out and put the ball joints on, but the ball joint process will be our next step. Well guys, it is another day, which it doesn't matter to you because it's all on the same video, but we have got some replacement parts and we are ready to go back together with the front of this thing. So uh, as I talked about in the last video, these are pretty shot. So it is time to get some new upper ball joints. Now, uh, you can just buy the ball joint, press the old one out, press the new one in. That is a ginormous pain. Uh, the ball joints by themselves are about 40 bucks. And if you want to do that option, you can. Now, I was noticing that all my rubber boots in here are cracked. So, I have got this. Now, what this is, is it's a new replacement, uh, complete upper A-arm from Moog. And uh, one of the really, really cool things about this is it has an offset bushing. So what that means is it is offset further to the back, which pushes the top of the A-arm out and gives you two degrees of additional camber. Now that's positive camber. So um, when you're talking about lowering a vehicle, generally you get a lot of negative camber. The top of the wheel wants to lay in. So with this, we are going to push that wheel back out. So it'll make it a little bit easier to get it back into spec which is really, really nice. Now, if you call Moog, they're gonna say that this was not designed for that. It was designed for OE application. Uh, for some reason, they do not want to tell you that it's for a lowered or lifted vehicle. They just don't wanna talk about that. So, um, according to them, it is for a regular vehicle. I will obviously list this part number down below, guys. I think it is a great replacement for the stock piece, but we need to take the stock piece out. Now, before I do that, they're just 21 millimeters on both sides here to get that upper A-arm out. What I like to do is I like to take a little marker and mark where the actual uh, eccentric is here for the alignment. So we get it as close to possible at uh, the factory spec or at least where it was at when we took it off. Now, you're still gonna have to have it aligned. This is not gonna be 
uh, a method to keep you from aligning it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little marker. I'm going to mark here on both this ridge on the bottom and then the eccentric itself. And I'm going to line it up with this piece that pokes out. And then we're going to take these off. Like I said, it's 21 millimeter. We will get it out of the way. We'll take all our connections off. That's the other cool thing. It does have the factory spot for the connections. Now I will tell you that this on the, um, this generally breaks when you try to pull it out. So good luck with that. But uh, we're going to get this one out of the way and we'll talk about putting the new one in. I wanted to show you guys these arms side by side. You can see that this is set further back than the factory one. So um, that is where we get that adjustment. Now we are ready to put the new one into place. Now, just so you guys know, when you pull this together, a lot of time it pinches. So you may have to take uh, just a pry bar and move this just a little, don't get real crazy, but we're gonna move that out a little so the new one goes in. The other thing I like to do is I like to put, even though this is metal, I like to put a little bit of grease on there, kind of cuts down on some noise or rubbing. Uh, generally they're cinched up pretty tight, but I like to put grease in there nonetheless. I'll show you what I'm talking about. You see that it's not wanting to go in. So we need to move that out just a little bit. And like I said, we're not gonna go crazy here. Just move it out just a little bit on both sides. And we should have enough at that point to get it back into place. And we do. And then you just need to make sure that you're going back in the same way. The threaded ends were both facing out. So that's the way we're gonna put it back together. And we're gonna line up our marks that we marked on the side. So once we get that all in place and snug down, you can see that my lines here, hopefully you guys can see my line I drew on both sides. They are all lined up. Now you need to torque this to 140 foot pounds. Um, that is what the factory spec calls for. Once we get that torque down, we are going to move on down to our new ball joint that we're going to put into place with our spacer. And I will show you that next. So once we get that all torqued down to 140 foot pounds, we are ready to put our spacer in, put our new ball joint in. If you guys are reusing your factory ball joint, all you have to do is set it on top, but this goes in first. And you see this little cutout here in the center, that faces up. So this is nice and snug, I see. Once we get that into place, we're going to set our ball joint on the top side, and we're gonna use this, the hardware that came with the McGoy's kit. Now, uh, your new ball joint, if you buy a new one, will come with new uh, hardware. You're not gonna use that. The only thing you're gonna use out of that bag would be the actual stud that goes, or the nut that goes on the stud on the bottom. So uh, you're gonna use these. You're gonna run them up through the bottom where your washer and your nut will be on the top side. Now, because the factory ones are actually riveted into place, uh, there's no real torque spec on this. So what I've done is I've just got them as tight as I can by hand, and then I went to 50 foot-pounds. So um, I, you don't want to smash that aluminum block in the center, so you don't want to get really crazy, but you also want them tight at the same time. So uh, like I said, I just hit them, hit them to uh, as tight as I can get them by hand, then 50 foot-pounds. So now our next step, guys, is to get the spring into place. So for that, you're going to need not only the spring, but you're gonna need the cup, the rubber cup or isolator that goes on the top of it. Now, I'm not gonna be reusing the slinky looking rubber on the bottom because mine was destroyed. And frankly, I've never seen that on any other car that I've done like this. So um, we're just gonna put it in with metal to metal. If I get some noise or it's annoying, then I can always take it back apart and find something to put on it. But anything that you put on the bottom side of that is going to raise the truck and we don't wanna do that. So. Uh, I'm going to go grab the spring and uh, that isolator for the top and we will get it into place. The other thing we're going to need is you're going to need a jack on the bottom side to lift this up uh, once you get the spring into place. So um, I'm going to go grab the jack as well. Actually one thing we need to do before I grab the spring because once you get the spring and you need to really put the spindle in next is you need to put some Loctite on this threaded insert that goes into the top. So 
your 15 millimeters that come in to hold your hub into place, uh, you won't be able to use the top one. So they supply this stud that goes in place. Now, they say to put some Loctite on it and then torque it to 75 foot-pounds, which um, I'm not sure that my attachment here will handle 75 foot-pounds, but we are sure going to try. If I snap it off, I snap it off, but uh, we're going to try. 75 foot-pounds, that needs to be in because, um, I mean, you could technically put it in place and then thread it in, but why not just go ahead and do it now, and then we'll uh, put the spring in and put that into place. So now we have the lowering spring itself and the isolator that I just dropped and it lines up on the top here and kind of snaps into place and you want to make sure that it's setting in that spot on the side and then we're ready to feed this thing in. So you can see I have my jack under there You put the front or the top up in first and then you can see the cutout here where the spring ends, that piece there is going to go into that spot. Now you have a lot more room to mess with because it is a lowering spring, so it goes in fairly easy. But what we're going to do is we're going to need to jack it up while we're holding that into place. There we go. Once that's in the pocket, both top and bottom, you can go ahead and start to lift the jack up. And once you get the jack to a certain point where you can get your A-arm on, go ahead and grab, or not your A-arm, but your spindle on, Go ahead and grab the nut for the bottom and the, t or the, sorry, the top and the bottom. Now that the spindle's on and then your two uh, nuts are partially threaded on, we're going to go ahead and torque these. So this bottom one here gets torqued to 92 and the top one gets torqued to 37. Now you may have to swing a little bit past in order to get your cotter key into place, but at least get to those numbers. Um, try to put those in. If you need to go a little further, you can. Now that we got the bottom one in, we're going to go ahead and take this one to 37. You may have trouble, you may have to move your wrench around in order to get to a spot where you can tighten it. Now after I got those tightened, I went ahead and put the cotter keys in and bent them over, uh, trimming the excess off. Now we can move this and we are ready to get the uh, actual hub assembly into place. Now uh, when you're putting the hub assembly on, you need to make sure, obviously you need your 215s, that, two of the 315s that you had before, but while you're putting this on, it comes with another nut. You need to kind of bring it out a little bit so you have room to put that nut in and then you can gradually pull it in and tighten each up a little bit at a time. Yeah. 
so you're just tightening these up a little bit of time leaving you room up here and uh, the McGoy's instructions call for 75 foot pounds here and then the factory two that go in from the back the 215 millimeters they're gonna get 133 so uh, you're gonna have to have a crow's foot here or get it as tight as you can with um, whatever you have now I did put some Loctite on it hopefully you guys were able to see that but let's get 133 foot pounds on this and um, then we'll be ready to put the brakes together and start routing some of these lines and then hopefully get some new shocks in so at this point we're ready to put the brake back into place so we'll slide it on and we're ready to put the caliper into place uh, the caliper bolts I've read a couple different things guys I've read 88 foot pounds read 129 foot pounds so we're probably gonna go with 88 that seems really really tight and um, that's where we're gonna torque those brake caliper bracket bolts so these guys here and I might put a little bit of Loctite on those as well once we have that torque down we're gonna move on to putting the brake line on these are just 10 millimeter. The cool thing is these new uh, A-arms are threaded that way. I don't know if they're just like Reman A-arms or what, but I don't care, it works awesome. Get this one into place. And you don't wanna get real crazy tightening these down, guys. I've, I've broken these in the past. It's uh, really, really, really easy to do, so. Don't get crazy tightening these. This one seems to be cross-threaded. It's a great start. So let me tell you what's going on here. It wasn't actually cross-threaded, it's that the front one is threaded and not the back one. So the opposite one of what we need is threaded. So I'm gonna have to thread that um, later on. I'll have to get me a thread. So, but for now, I wanna get this thing freaking together. It's making me crazy. So I'm gonna zip tie this around the bottom of the A-arm. Not gonna cause any problems. The other thing I'm gonna have to zip tie is um, this piece right here, because when I took it off, the bottom broke off which is pretty common, but I'm gonna zip, I'm gonna use this piece to hold still, but I'm gonna zip tie through that hole and use that as our holding point. But then we can hook all of our line back up for our ABS. We can snap this into place and uh, then we can move on to the shock. Once we have that into place, which guys, I'm not in love with this. Believe me, this is going to get fixed. I just don't have the tap right now to fix it. So we're going to go ahead and hook up our outer tie rod and um, should just go into place here. Sorry, I'm trying to move it with the same hand I'm moving the camera with, and that doesn't work. And this gets torque to 44 foot-pounds. Now, a lot of times when you're tightening this down, the middle wants to move, so you may have to have something uh, to get it up snug and then go ahead and tighten it to 44 foot-pounds. And uh, I'm gonna go grab a couple, or one of the shocks. So now we have the new shock and I'm going to go ahead and put it into place. Now, if you guys notice, I lifted on the bottom of the um, bottom ball joint to give me some more room. Otherwise it won't reach. Not quite long enough. This is quite a bit shorter of a shock. And all we need to do is put our bushing on top. And then for now, we'll just put one of these nuts on there. Get it to where it stays in place anyway. And then you're just gonna use your bottom two 13 millimeters. Uh, get, we can go ahead and get those started as well. May have to crawl under the truck to see what I'm doing. Maybe not. I'm going to have to lift this down just a little bit. There we go. Once 
once you get these started, then we will go back and torque them down, but I just wanted to get them in place. Now all it calls for is just 15 foot-pounds on the top side and 18 on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and get that tied up. And then the last thing we need to do is put our sway bar end link into place. Chances are I probably should have bought some new sway bar end links, but that may be down the road because I think I'm going to have to get a different... Let's take a look at this, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to get a different... Um, bump stop because that one is going to be very very close I have a feeling but anyway let's get these torqued down we'll put this back into place and that just gets snugged up I'm not gonna show you guys that um, it kind of sandwiches together you guys have seen me do that in the past uh, so the next thing we're going to do is put the wheels on and get this thing on the ground now that we have this um, stabilizer end link in place and I just ran that down just snug where the center doesn't turn. I told you guys I wasn't going to show you that, but that's pretty much how it tightens down. We need to add some grease to all our grease certs. So I ran out of grease. I actually had to set this thing down and move it around, but we're going to fill these up with grease and then we're going to set it down and take a look at it. Now, chances are, um, just from what I've looked at now, the suspension hasn't settled out in the front, but it's probably going to be a little higher. These springs are built for a V8 truck. This is a V6 truck. So we may have to do some trimming on the springs down the road, but for now I just wanna get it together because my body shop guy is ready for the truck. But let's go grab the grease gun. And I have a pneumatic grease gun. It makes it really nice. It'll take just two seconds. We'll get this changed out and then we'll get some measurements. Well guys, let's take a look at it all finished. It is on the ground. It is exciting. It's lowered. It is, oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this for a long time, guys. Uh, I've probably been waiting too long to be quite honest with you, but uh, let's talk about some of the issues that I had. Uh, I showed you guys, the, the very last thing that I showed you was me getting ready to put the wheel on. I filled all the grease certs up in the front. The only issue I had was when I took it down the road, get it back, it had the Chevy lean. Now these trucks are very, very common to have what they call a Chevy lean. So what it does is the front on this side generally sets higher. On the like so this this side would be a little higher than the rest of the truck and uh, GM blames that on the gas tank and the battery and they blame it on a lot of things and they do have a um, piece that goes on your leaf pack but that does not work on a lower truck so what we ended up doing was I had a couple different options I could have taken the spring out trim some off the spring brought the front down but what I chose to do is I actually put the stock um, hanger back here on this side because when I set it down this side was pretty slammed and the front was a little high so I put the stock hanger back in this location we still have the other one set at that uh, where we set it in the video so uh, it is an inch drop on that one and then this one is an inch up so when I did that it brought the back up it brought the front down it is now 29 inches just a hair under 29 inches in the back right at 29 inches in the front and that's fender lip to ground so it is still a little higher in the front and I blame that on the V6 springs or the fact that this is a V6 truck and it's a V8 spring so that V8 is a little heavier that would bring it down. Now I also think it's going to settle a little bit. So if it doesn't completely settle out, I'm gonna do one of two things. I'm either gonna buy some helper bags, we're gonna bring the back up with maybe five pounds of pressure to give it the actual, uh, a little bit higher in the back. When these things are completely level, it's gonna look lower in the back so we want it to be probably about a half inch higher in the back. So the way I'm gonna accomplish that is like I said, if it doesn't settle out, I'm gonna take those springs out and uh, trim a little off of them, or I'm gonna buy those helper bags. But guys, I hope that you liked this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this, hopefully it was informative. Um, but I had to get it done. It looks so much better. I know the truck's dirty, but it is getting ready to go to paint. So that will be our next project here. We're gonna start taking this stuff apart at least some of the stuff so it can get ready for paint and it is going to look incredible once it's done because we got a lot of new parts that are going to be going on it so guys if you did like this video please smash that thumbs up button if you're not subscribed go down and hit that subscribe button make sure you ring that bell icon that way you know every single time we drop a new video and well stay tuned to see this thing get blown apart for paint mm -hmm.